Hey, what's up, Facebook Live? You got the Ethan Lou show in the I-95 studio. What's happening? Oh, uh, uh, we got live and local coming up. These are stories of a local nature presented live on the radio. As always. Did I give it to you, the live and local? What's that? You gave it to me. All right, we'll get the first one out of the way. It's just uh, okay. it's just one of them bad news situations. Going to spend, spend a couple minutes on the back? Yeah, hey, buddy, buddy. Hey, yes. Oh, I better pull up the article so I can reference some of the... We should ring on Marky over at the goodie shop, find out how many what pie sells the best on there. But we won't. Oh, yeah. Ready? <coughs> He's busy with stuff, right? Nah. Nah. He's busy making pies. He's busy making everything over there. Yeah. Frank, Al, AJ, what's up? So, I, I yeah. can you lower take the money and run? Uh, God. I just feel tired today. Why? Yeah, me too. I went to bed early last night. Me too. It's enough already. Oh. It's why. It's just too much doing stuff for so long that everybody's tired. So, you know that app that puts your face on famous movie scenes? My friend made three of them of me, one on Woody Harrelson, one on Chuck Norris, one on Eddie Murphy and Coming to America. I post them all, all three of them. Ba -ba 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 the Eddie Murphy one, someone commented that it's like blackface. Yeah, I said, no, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. like blackface at all. Uh, and then I left it at that, and then I go back and check, and then someone started defending me. I didn't want them to defend me, and they start posting uh, moments in time where white like, people so did you know make the mistake of doing black things. Homer rock and roll. I deleted Ethan the thread. Do it, so. I, I don't need part of anybody's nonsense. We've got sunshine, nonsense. patchy clouds, uh, 45 today. Uh, we do have a confirmation. The mayor will join us about 8.20 this morning. Right, and then we got live and local two rounds of that. Two rounds of missed headlines. We'll do your first round of live and local right after traffic. Absolutely correct. Here's Kelly. So it's just like... Yeah, thank you, Gary. I didn't even make them. My buddy Joey made them. So it's just... You know, you can't do anything, and then these threads become your responsibility. So I just deleted the whole post. I don't want to be a part of things, you know? I just want to not be a part of things. You know, I'm just a regular-ass person trying to have fun like everybody else with my face on a movie thing, you know? Why's it got to be all this hard? Can't we all calm down? It's a great question, Lama. Traffic report brought to you by New Age Collision Center, General Motors Certified Collision Repair Facility, where service and quality still exists, from a small fender bender to big collision repairs. These are the guys that get the job done, Lou. They're located in Brookfield, Connecticut. You can call them up at 203-546-7614. Oh, so much waiting. I'm just sitting here waiting. I know. New York City mourning the death of its first and only black mayor. NYPD officials have confirmed... Mayor Dinkins. I was getting to that. I know. You just, you just like, jumped in. I know. Confirmed that David Dinkins died Monday night at the age of 93. A native of Trent, New Jersey, who practiced law in New York City before starting a career in politics. Dinkins apparently died of natural causes. His death comes a little more than a month after his wife, Joyce Dinkins. Natural causes, 93, sign me up for that right yeah. now. But it is sad to hear. Yeah. And now on to the fun topic. Yes. Zipia. Mm -hmm. Recently published stats from the American Pie Council. Yeah. Is it really a pie council? That's a, there's an American Pie Council. How do I get out of here? They say that 186 million pies are sold in American grocery stores each year. They uh, break down the numbers even further. That, that That's where we uh, learn the nutmeg state. Nutmeg state. That's us. Here, right, today. Connecticut. Uh, among 41 other states that rank pumpkin pie as their favorite pie. Yeah, we're, we're pretty unified as a nation when it comes to pies. Right. And that's where it ends, the unification. That's it? Yeah. We should check in with our buddy Marky over there at the goodie shop, see how many pies he sells. He makes his own, though. Well, yeah, in fact, I ordered one. He's a bakery. Yeah. Of course he makes his own. Of course. You can't go to, like, I understand. You know, stop and shop and then resell their pies. I think people would get upset. No one is inferring that's the case. Okay. Were you inferring or implying? Whatever. Pecan. 
or pecan, or however you want to pronounce it, uh, comes in at second with five states calling it the best pie. Also learned that bakers are in high demand right now. Right. With 4,853 baking jobs opportunities available nationwide. Love the way I worded that? Yeah. It sucked. Who loves pumpkin pie the most? Alaska is your answer. They're right. crazy about the pumpkin. Yeah. I know Alaska we... and uh, Mississippi likes pump pumpkin the least. Yeah. Uh, Thanksgiving pie time. It's also cake season. Seven states are looking up cake recipe. Here's the deal with pie. What's that? B cake. You know? Well, no. And hey, have, cake. We have cake. We have pie. It's two different things. And hey, cake. B ice cream cake. You know? We have ice cream cake. No, but we you shouldn't. You don't have to roll it all into We one. don't need to make these pies and cakes. Well, we could just have ice cream cake. Yeah. It's far superior to anything right. that we're putting on the table for Lou, dessert. Lou's giving his uh, opinion. Well, because everybody's like, we're going to have dessert. Who wants coffee? I'm like, no, I want no coffee. It's 8.30 at night, yeah. so I don't want coffee. Okay. I don't want to eat pies and cakes. Can someone please put an ice cream cake out here? And that's, then I'll that's sit. That's just not normal behavior for Thanksgiving. And then I'll sit. Instead, you can find me in the kitchen mm -hmm. eating leftover dinners, part two. That's fine. I right. do that. Yeah. You want to be a part of that? A lot of people who do that, you're going to join in? What, eating another eating dinner later? The second dinner? I'm yeah. eating dinner part two while they're eating dessert. I see. Because it's pointless, because it's not ice cream cake. It's ice cream cake about 4% of the time, when dessert should be 100% ice cream cake. Okay. You know? So you like ice cream cake. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. Vermont is the best state to be a baker, according to the study. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Who else even ranked, right? So we talked about pumpkin, pecan, huh? apple did okay, sweet potato pie. Ugh, no thanks. I'll eat my sweet potatoes, you know, roasted in the oven for Thanksgiving. That's another thing. Hey, sweet potatoes, be regular mashed potatoes. <laughs> I've done that before. They're delicious. What, eat regular mashed potatoes? Take, no, you take the sweet potatoes, you know, you, you chop them up, you kind of dice them, you pop them in, uh, you know, you, you boil them so they get nice and soft. Or what you do is you chop them up. Yeah. Okay, and then you put you uh, put a little oil on them, olive oil, salt and pepper, pop them in the oven. 450, 20 minutes. Now you got sweet potatoes that are just to die for. You're adding them to I'm regular chef, mashed potatoes? I'm not a chef. You are a chef? No, I don't add, you can just do sweet potatoes. Right, no, I hate them. Okay. So well, B, mashed potatoes. No, some people love them. Though. I love them. Yeah, no, I know. They're... I'd rather go sweet potatoes than mashed potatoes. What do you, well, what do you see, think about that? I don't like it. And you people are everywhere, you sweet potato people. Yeah, I like sweet potatoes. I'd like to hit Plus, you better with, for with you. the open face of a More rat. healthy. Yeah? Yeah. Well, cool. I don't want healthy. You put <laughs> gobs of butter on your mashed potatoes? Yes. Okay, cool. Yes. All right. We're only gonna. We're only here for a short time. We are, but dust in the wind, my friend. Let me tell you something. Right and if now. I'm gonna goat eat... cheese mashed potatoes are the way to go. Yeah, goat, goat cheese. Goat cheese. Yeah. Disagree, sir. Pop some goat cheese. In I'm there. not popping anything. Now you're talking mashed potatoes with goat cheese. No, if I'm gonna be dust in the wind, my belly's gonna be full of regular mashed potatoes That's it. loaded your with way, butter. I'll go my way. Okay. Now we just hit. A, we just hit a bunch of songs there. You can go your own way and dust in the wind. <laughs> can we throw a couple more references in? There any songs about mashed potatoes? <laughs> no, no. Unfortunately, there are not. Okay, there's a lot of them. Ice cream cake. Tom does not like ice cream cake. So, Tom, we will ask you kindly to leave the United States of America. <laughs> Let's see. Ooh, Irene, Tom, Frank, John. Ooh, yeah. John's going deep on the pumpkin. Thing. Ice cream cake is the best, Lama. Gary, chickens, chicken pies. <laughs> oh, for God's oh sake, I do chickens. love, I do love um, shepherd's pie. Shepherd's pie, good. Good. We just had that last week. Good. Good. Erica said, "What do you want for dinner?" I said, "Shepherd's pie." She said, "I didn't see that coming." What did she, What did she put in? You know the shepherd's pie stuff. Did, Whatever goes in there. Well, did you? Taste any of it at all before you let it go down your throat? No, I just inhaled. Yeah. I mean, was it like <laughs> beef and potatoes and all sorts of stuff? It was all that stuff that okay. goes in Shepherd's well, Pie. I'll tell you what I've been having a hankering for lately. What, what's that? Every day it's like a struggle to come up with ideas for dinner that the kids will eat and that we all want. Sure. It's like, a, it's like this whole, you know, rigmarole. rigmarole. What the Holy hell? Fuck. It's time for vacation. Wow. How could both of us 
come up with that word at the same time. That's bad. And I almost, as I was I saying it, I feel like you were going to say it. That was weird. I didn't have any idea you were going to say it. Oh, man. Let's discuss it some more. <laughs> that was weird, though. It was weird. So she said, what do you want for dinner? And I said, calzone. Okay. Homemade calzone. Yeah. She said, I don't have a dough. Right. And then I came up, she asked, what, what, what else do you want for dinner? And I came up with some other dough-based idea. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I said, listen, I don't know what to tell you, but at the moment, all my dinner ideas involve a dough. So we'd better get on that dough thing. The proper answer would have been, whatever you make, Eric. I know it's going to be That's an improper answer. Because I'm told that is not helpful. Oh, she wants a decision. Suggestions. Okay. And I suggest dough based. Did you ever ask her? Because I'm the dough boy. To make lima beans. No. But they can go next to stuff. I don't have a problem with, with the lima well, bean. Well, what about like. Uh, Chalupa is not a the dough based product, right? Chalupa? Yeah. I don't even think that's a real Mexican food. That was made up by Taco Bell. I'll bet. That's just my guess. Yeah, I just want a calzone. I'll make them. I don't care. You're not allowed to make. Them. No, I can make a calzone. I'll make that. I'll make the f out of a calzone. Okay. You know, you'll you'll be like, in man love with me if you ate one of my calzones, huh? Okay. You want my fat meat pocket in your mouth? No. I think you do. I've never dreamed about it. Oh, I believe that you do. Three minutes, twenty-two seconds. And you'll go through a whole rigmarole to get it. <laughs> that's that's um, something I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. I know. And my pizza's bang a -lang too. You should read about it. Yeah, you don't have to come up with, you know, different words all the time. Yep. Wait till you taste my pizza. All right. Let's see what we have here. I should come out of my comfort zone. Instead of doing just like chicken and stuff and boring stuff, I should, I should you know, make my own, you know, try a calzone. Yeah, try a calzone is right. I would go, here's what I would do if I was making it for you. Yeah. You know? Or me at this point. This is what I want. I don't even know where to start. I want crumbled sausage. Yeah. I want spinach. Okay, good. And then those are the only two ingredients above and beyond the regular, okay. you know, cheeses. What do you mean, the regular cheeses? M mozzarella and ragot. Spinach? What is it? It's mozzarella and ragot. Okay. And I'm then I would you. add spinach. Because normally people go with like pepperoni or something, but I would go yeah. sausage and spinach. All right. How much do you use cheese-wise? Well, you know what? Ton I'm, of cheese. I'm going to go to my uh, my recipe uh, website. No, you come to my recipe website. No. Called the Lou Milano House of Eat Well. <laughs> That's not eating well. <laughs> <laughs> Two fattening cheeses, yeah. a sprinkle of spinach, and an ass load of sausage. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> That would be insta heart attack. Minute 46. I'm going to go right to recipes.com right now and find out about this calcium. Rebecca wants me to take me to her Thanksgiving dinner. I might take you up on that. <laughs> <laughs> this is like odd food porn, says Aurora. We are getting a little fooded up. I'm telling you. Stromboli. Ooh, good pull. Good pull. Who said that? John. Oh, I can go for a stromboli right now. That's the cousin of the calzo. I didn't know that. It's just a long ass calzone, basically, wow. with okay. a little bit less cheese. Cool. You know, that's typically I was a done pepperoni. With this probably about forty-three seconds ago. I know, but I'm really am going to eat a lot this holiday. I feel it coming. Just sitting here talking about foods. Really? I'm walking through the door. Hey, hey, hey! I'm not going to do that. Oh, okay. Because my mouth will already be full of food. I can't scream like that. What are we doing? We're going to go on the air here. Right now. Fifty seconds. Fifty seconds. <sighs> Everybody stay calm. Everybody's in agreement. I love the sausage. Everybody's loving the stromboli. We got some great ideas here. What's the stromboli? What is that? What's in the stromboli? It's the cousin to the calzone. Basically the same ingredients. I don't know yeah, if you... The stromboli. I just call because it stromboli. I actually think in the stromboli, you don't typically have the regard like you do in a calzone. It's just mozzarella, as crackers <laughs> say. Can I get some mozzarella on that? Goat cheese. How about a goat cheese calzone? Which one are you in the goat cheese? You trying to annoy I me? Goat cheese. I love goats. Yeah, see, it's more rolled and it's less cheese, more meat. You go pepperonis. 
Ooh. Side 95, the home of rock and roll. Bang and gong making calzones. That's what we're doing here this morning. <laughs> and Stromboli. And Stromboli. Just talking about five. food. Just talking about food. Get fired up for this food <laughs> holiday. Yeah. All right, I got a Stromboli recipe Okay, don't read it to me now because we don't have time. Yeah. But stop reading recipes on the air. People hate that. <laughs> I can understand why. Here's your ride 95 right now. Traffic update at 636. Hey, Kelly. So the secret is the dough, as with everything. The secret's the dough, Ethan, they say. You got to have that good dough. It's a rolled pizza dough filled with cured meats. You got to cure them meats. You, you know? know, cure them with what? Uh, vaccines? You got to cure them of a disease. And then you roll them, you know, in the proper dough. All right. And then away we go. Now you're not helpful. Right. Stromboli is calzone with an erection. <laughs> That's funny. That's pretty good. <coughs> COVID. <coughs> That's what I'm going to say now. You know, <laughs> the kids throw something in the garbage. They go, Kobe. If I cough, I'm going to go, <coughs> COVID. Wow. Yes, I know. I know. Yeah, COVID, COVID, COVID. Hey, did you guys hear about this COVID-19? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we need a spooky calzone snake. There's a calzone. It looks like a snake. Oh, they made a snake. Yeah. They themed it out. It's a Halloween calzone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I'm not going to make my calzone with a bread machine, okay? I don't want it. That's just enough. That's too much. Really need. That's a too much for you. Calzone. So many good penis shaped foods, if you think about it. All right. Thank you, J637, sports check Rookie time. Jordan Fuller intercepted Tom Brady twice, including one inside two minutes. The Rams held off the Bucks 27-24 on Monday Night Football in Tampa. Luis Rojas is going to be back with the Mets in their dugout next season. The team formally announced Monday he will return as manager in 2021. And a date for Major League Baseball's Field of Dreams game in 2021 is now set. Yankees and White Sox will meet August 12th in the first Major League Baseball game ever in the state of Iowa. The two teams were uh, originally scheduled to meet this year before the COVID-19 pandemic disruption. It's going to be the coolest game ever. I was okay. so upset when they canceled it. You know, it's out in the, the movie Field of Dreams, out in that cornfield. Yes. Yankees, Sox, it's going to be killer. Watch out for it. Okay. Look out, duck. Where are they going to put all the people? That's the thing. You can't get a ticket to this thing. Because they have stands there. It's a little bit bigger than in the movie where they just had the one riser. Sure, sure. Uh, but they're, they're going to pack as many people in there as they can. But they, I think the tickets, the pre-sales for them, were going for thousands of dollars. Really? Yeah, it's a hot, it's a hot ticket, baby. Don't you think one of the fans is going to come like out of the cornfield? Well, everybody, I'm sure they're going to... They're going to get yelled at. No, them. they're going to do paid tours, I would imagine, sure. in the cornfield. You know, that's a big money-making machine out there. One of my favorite movies. It's so good. I-95 weather. We're looking sunshine, patchy clouds today, 45. Partly cloudy tomorrow, 52. Thanksgiving Day looks mild with periods of rain on and off, up around 56. This information segment brought to you by Connecticut's own Candlewood Coffee. Support local with every cup you drink. You can look for them at ShopRite, Big Y, Caraluzzi's, or online at CandlewoodCoffee.com. All right. Seriously, Lou, she says it. She says, good penis-shaped foods out there. Aurora's agreeing with me. You got your, uh, your zucchini. Is that a zucchini, the big purple one that everybody uses to show uh, penises? That's, uh, no, but carrots, zucchini is green. Carrots, corn, hot dogs, bananas. I'm going to make a new pot of coffee. Sausage. Think about sausage. Too close. How you doing, Aurora? That was weird. That was creepy. That was so How weird. creepy was that? Eggplant. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. Now there are 38 days left in 2020, including today. You knew that. According to a new survey, three quarters of people say they're counting down the days until this year is over. The survey also found that 65% of people say they're just exhausted by 2020, and 46% say they're, quote, 
on the brink of going crazy from their lack of privacy during quarantine. Well, here's the problem. The world doesn't know about the calendar. You know? And nothing will change. It's not as if January 1, everything will change. You know, everybody follow that? And we are already crazy. I'm, I'm here to predict that January 1, nothing changes. And uh, everything remains bad. I'm, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. So the, the only thing you can do to get through it all is, uh, you know, eat calzone. You know, sip on some boozes and look at butt cheeks. It's the only thing that's going to get you through this experiment we call life. That is, that is failing miserably. You know, we are not having a good time, but there are a handful of distractions that can make it tolerable. <laughs> and I've identified the three of them that make it tolerable. Cheese, butt cheeks, and the boozes. Coffee is okay. It's one of those minor fun distractions. But we don't need to talk about coffee, you know? That's, there's far enough of that. There's so much of that going on out there. And for the life of me, I can't understand why. When people post a picture of, gotta have my morning Joe, get started day. Are we done with that one? You making a new pot? Making a new pot. Yours is too strong. Because you can't start a day without morning Joe. I need my morning coffee. What? Oh, I got them pointed out the back door. You know what I'm talking about. Like Pan used to post a picture of a coffee cup. Enough of the coffee cup and the wine. It's every morning. Let's get a new interest. But it's every morning. Every morning. We get it. Every friggin' morning. Lady, you like coffee. Right. Everybody likes coffee. You know, if everybody likes puppies, we have to talk about it every second of every day. You know, we should just debate the things we disagree on. Man, I got some shot going here for them. Don't forget about the chickens, he says. Pizza. That's another good shape. Remember, don't judge a book by its cover. I always do that. How are you supposed to know if you're going to buy the book or not? Uh, you read a little bit of it. You do? Read the reviews. Just don't no, you look at the cover. It tells everything you need no, to know. No. Any good marketing person will have a good cover going for you. All right. You know what? Why do I even <laughs> argue with you? I like when they put the Phew. author on the back. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> he's got on a turtleneck. The author always has... Where are you going, bro? Author always has a turtleneck on. Yeah. And they do this pose in black and white. Yeah, it's to let you know that they're very pensive. Always deep in thought, those authors. And always cold in the neck region. Does your neck have to be cold to be a, a you know, a novelist or any kind of author for that matter? That's a lot of jugs of soap. You know what I'm talking about, bro, with the authors? I'm going to come back and I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to uh, drive the bus now. Yeah, but did you follow my comment about authors? They always have a turtleneck on. Not always. Most of the eighty-one percent of the time. Okay. They have a turtleneck on. All right. And in their photo. Okay. On the back of the. Uh, All right. So what's your point? <coughs> Why are their necks so cold? You know. Does writing make your neck cold? I, I do. You and I write so much. I pro we probably write more than well, your home, typical author. My I neck write, isn't I cold. A on. You do. Oh yeah. Huh. So maybe I'm not doing it right. Maybe if I shut the window that's behind me, I wouldn't need a turn. That's awesome. <clears throat> I want to dress weird for one day. Turtleneck with a gold chain on the outside. Why don't you... Uh, Mustaches, bad hair. Why bro. don't you dress up it's as ironic. a pilgrim for Thanksgiving? No. I never did that. I never went that way. Whenever really? we were in school 
and we got to choose between pilgrims and Native Americans, right. I would always go as the Native American. Yeah. Do they do that anymore? No. No, right? Yeah. Always afraid you're going to offend somebody when you do stuff like that. Right, back in the day. You don't that, want to offend anybody. That wasn't the case. Yeah. You know, they're like, hey, kids, get offensive. Dress up all offensive-like and come to school. And don't do anything, because we didn't do anything. Hardcover, turtleneck. Wow, that's a lot of thoughts. Picture of the wall clock and the coffee maker is much better. <laughs> Chicken's pizza. So yeah, let's talk about how many triangle-shaped foods do we have? You got pizza, nachos, so triangles and penises. Big fans of those. Food shapes, I mean. Penis-shaped foods, triangle-shaped foods. Yes, please. You know what I'm saying? And I do love chicken, but I've never seen triangle chickens. But we could shape them however we want, right? That's all up to the, the artist. The chef. I have nothing else to say to you guys until we get <clears throat> this uh, thing going here. Oh, here we go. Now we're talking pachina-shaped stuff. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Cake, block of cheese. I didn't think about those for triangles. See? That's what it all boils down to. Is there anything that comes in a square that is better than a triangle-shaped or penis-shaped food? I would say no. Right? I didn't hear what you said. We're talking shapes of foods. Okay. So far, we've identified penis and triangle. Right as having the best foods mm -hmm. in terms of shapes. Okay. Now we're trying to figure out what other shapes. Do we eat round foods? Sure. What? Bagels. Bagels. Don't, donuts. Any citrus fruit? Apple sphere. Ick, oh. No, the, the orange would be more spherical. The apple's all lumpy. Really with this? <laughs> the apple's almost a rhombus in some cases. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A clear discussion group about fruits. A clear is a rectangle. Brownies, yep. Yeah. Look at us coming up with all these shapes. <laughs> Cupcakes. What else is there left to talk about? Nothing. Nothing. They're having a good time though, it seems. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. Jawbreakers, another sphere. Mm -hmm. Look at the the class is very attentive today. <laughs> the class. <laughs> I should be sitting at my my school chair, my desk here. My high school desk in front of my locker. They didn't typically <laughs> put the desks in front of your lockers, although that would be a lot cooler. Do class in the hallway. Minute 10. Minute 10. I Minute 10. I'll take out my number two pencils. Okay. Guess what I have, Dan? Comic book is ready to go. And so are my baseball cards. Here you go. It's pretty much how I rolled in school. Uh -huh. are these, yeah, these are number twos. They're fancy number twos, though, with different colors. I don't like that. I like your regular number oh, two hot. pencil okay. that is identified as a number two pencil. And it has the, uh, what is that, a hex head? Hex head. Yeah? Yeah. This is too round. The last time I took a test, you want to know? Huh? Uh, middle of eighth grade? Nope. To be a police officer. Oh, that's right. And uh, I had one of the highest scores. 160 applicants. I was in the top 10. I was given a conditional hire to be a police officer. Yeah. I won't say where. Okay. Because I don't want to damage the reputation of this particular police department. <laughs> Yeah. Song's over. Oh, where's my hand sanitizer? What? It's right there. It's right 95, the home of rock and roll. I95rock.com. Just a reminder, let's say today's Tuesday. We have day after tomorrow is Thanksgiving, and uh, you know what that means. We won't be here. We won't be I'll here. I'll be in sweatpants. I95 has some great traditions, like, uh, you know, food, family, football. 
Alice's Restaurant. Old Guthrie's Thanksgiving Classic, Alice's Restaurant. We will play it three times on Thanksgiving Day, 8 a.m., noon, and again at 5 p.m. I love that tradition. All 20 minutes of it. It's such a good song. I love Arlo. Remember when we went to see him at the Ridgefield Playhouse? Yeah. I'm like, man, could this dude tell a story? Yeah, he didn't, doesn't play Alice's Restaurant a whole lot. You, know? you would think... Is, did Arlo die? No. He stopped touring. Him. That's right. I wrote the article. Why don't I know that? I wrote it a month ago. Wow. He I just, remember that. He just retired from touring. Mm -hmm. So that's what was the news. He know, folks, he did not die. He retired from touring. Correct. Uh, you would think that these guys that are singer-songwriters mm -hmm. would all be good storytellers when the song stops. I bet. That's not always the case. Arlo, however, you know, tells a great story while the song is going, and then when it stops, he has this ability to continue the storytelling. Sure. In a, in a matter that keeps you listening. Unlike what I just did. <laughs> Okay. Well, that's fascinating. I know. Bruce. I'm fascinated. We, uh, we've got... To, can I get some of headlines here? Where's our producer? <laughs> Where are the headlines I'm supposed to see? at me? Do Where are the headlines I'm supposed to see? Jeez. Is Don on the phone? Get some traffic first from California. <coughs> we'll COVID. Uh, just dip right into those headlines here momentarily. Is that a pail on the floor? Don't forget to be on your cell phone throughout the entire class. Yeah, we didn't have them cell phones. They didn't exist. Ponderous. <laughs> Ponderous. And they all moved away from me on the Group W bench until I created a nuisance. I don't know what the hell that means. Whoa, whoa! It's gonna blow what? the butterscotch off your grandmother's bowl? That's some ginger power right there. A what? blast of ginger. That's some copy. A blast of ginger that will blow the butterscotch off your grandma's bowl? Wow. That's some intense copy. That's that's a little strong. And good on Kelly for not messing it up. It's I a know. bit of a tongue twister. Hey look, we got a brand new study, a very important study. Uh, and we're looking into the stuffing versus dressing debate to figure out which term is more popular in different states. I only learned about, I did a stuffing dressing uh, article last week. Yeah, how'd that go? It's the first time I learned that stuffing is referred to as dressing in other states. Okay. And there's some ingredient tweaks in there. Stuffing, the preferred item in 36 states, and dressing 14 states. Dressing states are mainly in the South. Right. Although it's also the go-go, the go-go, I was going to say, the go-to-learn in places like Indiana and Missouri as well. Study also found the states that love to eat stuffing and dressing the most. Five states where people say they love stuffing the most. Maine, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, and New Jersey. Right. Five states where people say they love dressing the most. Mississippi, Alabama. Louisiana, Arkansas, and Georgia. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. So they have... Fascinating. It is fascinating, because I, I think that a lot of people like me would be astonished to learn that it's not called stuffing some places. Mm -hmm. And they have, you know, various tweaks. Like, there's a recipe here. We're talking all food this morning. I love this. Southern cornbread dressing. It's got a cornbread base. Did you no know kidding. about that? Cornbread dressing. Cor really? Cornbread... Uh Base? Seriously? Yeah. yeah. What? What do you think? Is that isn't that obvious? I don't know. Cornbread stuffing. Cornbread base. Is that what we make it with here? No. Uh, that's what I'm saying. No, we, we make cornbread stuffing with blueberry muffins. Of course we do. What do we make regular stuffing with? Uh, breadcrumbs. So not cornbread. We spice them all up. So what are you making fun of me for? It's not made with cornbread. It felt like it. All right, fair enough. Move on. Okay, we're doing the next one. I guess so. But now we're just shouting at each other. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Friday, 39 year old guy, his name is Daniel. Uh, Kurt, uh, I can't pronounce it. Danny Boy. Filled out the official government form looking for an exemption. Exemption from what? Exe essential activities like getting groceries. Uh, he wanted to pass, uh, he wanted to. I'm just Can I have the story, this. please? No, you can't. 
He wanted to pass to, quote, smash a guy's face in. But what was he filling out the form for? He, he filled out the, uh, all of the formal government paperwork last week to try to get a coronavirus lockdown pass. Gotcha. So in he's France. in a state. Okay. Yes. He wanted to travel outside the zone to, quote, smash a guy's face in. I respect the hustle. Yeah. Whose face did he want to smash in? Well, because he put the full details of his plan on the form, <laughs> the police found him, you know, right where he said he'd be at 10.15 on Friday night, hiding behind a car outside the guy's house, waiting to smash his face in. <laughs> the police said they appreciated Daniel filling out the forms to say uh, compliant with the town, but his reason for breaking the lockdown wasn't valid. Really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he was hit with a $160 fine for that violation. Then he uh, got hit with another $180 for being drunk in public. No word on why he wanted to smash the guy's face. <laughs> so that would have been helpful. I love guys that are so angry that they say they're going to be at a place, yeah. at a time, right. and they're there. Make me an appointment to smash the guy's face. Yeah, but they're always so angry, the place and the time make no sense. Right. Like, I will meet you at the Waffle House at 10.09. I'm going to smash your face in. Like, why the Waffle House? <laughs> it's not close to either one of our houses, and why 10.09? Because <laughs> he was so angry, he just picked an arbitrary place and time. Right. But then once he, once he picks it, he's going to be there. Because mm -hmm. he wants to smash that guy's face in. He's an organized face smasher. Yeah. Well, that's how you Makes know you a guy that. is angry. Right. They're, they set a place, they set a time, and they'll be there. Well, I'm glad we got that set. We did. New survey asked 30,000 Americans, what is the earliest acceptable time for radio stations to start playing Christmas music? I'm going to say something here. Okay. It depends very much on their format. Yes. I think our format, Classic Rock Radio, the last second possible. We have terrible... Classic Rock has terrible holiday theme songs, with very few exceptions. I like the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Mm -hmm. I like uh, the, the Eagles' uh, Please, Come Home for Please Come Home for Christmas. Yeah. 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 That's, I can't think of any more. I really can't stand most of what goes on. Who's the one I really hate? You know who I'm talking about. Tom Petty? Uh, no. Billy Squire? They all do Christmas stuff. They do? Yeah, uh, but... So you're a traditional Christmas song guy. Yes. Like, we can't play Bing Crosby's White Christmas on this No, show. but I love that stuff. Right. So the traditional stuff, yes, beauty. Country's ass in, in How general. How about the Ray Conniff singers? Do you like them? I don't know Ray Conniff no, singers. I'm sure I know the songs, yeah. but I don't know them by their, their name. All right. I'm trying to think, what is the one that I hate here? Is it, isn't there a doc of Red some Peters? Sort? That, that, that Red one? Peters, I hate. <laughs> Who's the other one? I don't know. That does, like, uh, isn't there a doc something? Um, I, 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 I don't know. Doc Rivers? No, he played for the oh, Knicks. You're talking about the song Bob parodies, Rivers? Like, yeah, Bob Rivers. Does he do Christmas? So yes, he does song, he does song I parody Christmas. I hate, yeah. hate those songs. So you don't like Sled Zeppelin? I hate them. I hate them. They are not funny. They are not good. They're very good. They're bad and not, not good. Not bad. They're very oh, good. Oh, I hate them. So classic rock radio should wait till the last possible second. If outfit. you're in an oldies format, yeah. roll it out the day after Thanksgiving. If you're an easy listening station, they do. They'll, they'll roll them out after Thanksgiving. And they can too. We usually wait till like maybe a week before. Oh, and then before that's we start still a problem. Well, here are the, the options they gave and how people answered. In November, this is when to start playing Christmas music. In November, but before Thanksgiving, 12% said they should start playing before Thanksgiving. That is so wrong. Yeah. I will not allow that to happen. Oh, well, yeah, those people need to get out of here. On Thanksgiving Day, 11%. In late November, after Thanksgiving, 35%. That right. was the number one answer. Right. And then it just kind of goes down. People are very passionate about this topic. And I feel like the music walks hand in hand with the decorations. You know? What do you mean? People argue about when the decorations should start going up. Okay. You know, we all make fun of the guy who leaves it up till March. Yeah. But we all argue about when they should start going up. Mm -hmm. I think people who really love the holiday and enjoying it for a long time, most would agree day after Thanksgiving is okay. Right. Anything prior to that freaks people out. So usually. what 
Do you guys do your tree on the day after Thanksgiving? No, I'm not allowed. Like the beginning of December. Eric says it's too soon. Yeah. I might. I would enjoy it because what's all the effort for? Uh huh. You want to enjoy the tree for a longer period of time. That's the point. Yeah. Especially if you're me and the one doing all the work. Right. You know, I can't get everybody on the same page. They're running around. Who's hitting somebody on the head with a decoration? Sure. Who has a piece of the tree and is choking their brother out? Uh -huh. You know, with the lights. That's good family fun right there. <laughs> Just let's wrap it up. Did you ever go uh, cut down your own tree? When my mother was alive, we, we would go out out in the country, uh, the suburbs of Rochester, like Rush, New York. Yeah. We go out into the fields, and we would cut down our own tree. My mother was uh, four boiler makers in when we started making that trek. Because that's a good the tree. That's a good drunk activity. Uh huh. Um, so I'm walking with her on that. Yeah. The thing is, it wasn't Christmas tree farm, so you're just looking for a tree to cut down. In the woods. In the woods. So your dad would have to cut it and carry it. No, my dad was not alive then. Oh. So your mom's hammered, cuts yeah. the tree down, drags it out of the woods herself. Sure. And it, you know, you a lot know, of respect. You know what it is. It's a Charlie Brown tree is what it is. Sure. Yeah. But still. Because she can't tell the difference. I respect her game on that one. Still love you, Ma. Sorry. Yeah, it's a memory. You still have it. Right. You know, Boilermakers or not, she gave you a memory. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, and I'm yeah. sure you didn't help carry the tree. <laughs> you just complained the whole time. 701. <laughs> Those are your missed headlines. Ethan and Lou. <laughs> it's a good time. All right, all right, all right. Play WAP Thanksgiving Eve. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Okay. Oh, you guys made some great contributions this morning. This was a lot of fun talking about the different shapes of foods. You know? Tell a friend about our Facebook lives. Lives. You know? Tell a friend about our lives. Sure. You know? Our personal lives. Tell a friend about our show. Tell your friends everything right now. When you finish with this, pick up the phone, call friends. Yeah, come on. Tell them everything.